pandemic and with only four people deserves it. This, you know, they, uh, AEW has always said they were going to be Moxley, tag pa- team or front Mox, center. Uh, Kenny Omega, it, Hangman, Adam Page were on that contenders list too. Yeah, but you know, they, they always said they were they were really going to focus on tag teams, and this this was a, a the best match of the year for all of the companies, at least according to us, and it's a tag team match. And two of the you know the Bucks have long been considered one of the best tag teams in the world. FTR just recently have been considered one of the best tag teams of the world. There was a point we never thought they would see each other. Two completely different styles that shouldn't go well together. Shouldn't. And they made beautiful harmony. Uh Uh-huh. You knew it was magic from the second you started watching it to the very end. And everything made sense. And the, the finish made sense because Dax got up in his britches. His partner was out and he figured, you know what? To beat the young bucks, I got to go to the top rope. And he, went he made a the... fatal flaw. And this was after Tully Blanchard was ev- evicted from the ringside. Yeah. And, and he'd been with them every match before that. I still think they need that. to lose Blanchard, by the way. I think they'd be so much better off without him as a mouthpiece. I think they can talk just fine on their own. But I, I like really him good. being a second without having to be a mouthpiece. Uh, I, I, you know, I think he can I'm be a saying, second without being a mouthpiece. Some of my least favorite promos, and maybe that should be a new beefy award in the future. <laughs> but my least favorite promos were were Blanchard and and um, Jake Roberts back yeah. and forth. That was some of the hardest listening <laughs> I've I've had to go through in a long time. Right, and and you've listened recently listened to Nickelback, so that's saying a lot. <laughs> you know, they had Woo. the better cover of "The Devil Went Down to Georgia" in in twenty twenty, and that's me giving Nickelback over Corn and Yellow Wolf, which breaks my heart. But but not over CDB, correct? Yeah, definitely not. Okay, okay, okay. Just just checking. <laughs> Charlie Daniels Band always top devil. Actually, uh, Devil Went to Jamaica from the Livewire days. That's the best one. Devil Went to Jamaica. Um, well, Pasty, uh, trying to think of whose fucking turn it is now. That'd be you. I brought in the match of the year. I I don't remember how things go. Pasty, breakout star of the year. I don't have a a fun segue because I forgot whose fucking turn it was. I thought it was mine. I didn't want to step on your toes. Oh, you had to break out of your mind to get there. Uh, Breakout star of the year is the performer who broke the record for best-selling. Well, didn't break the record for best-selling, but had the best-selling T-shirt this year in pro wrestling tees. And I think that speaks of itself, especially for somebody who two years ago, nobody, barely anybody knew one year ago, a handful of people knew and were sick. Didn't want to see them. You know, it's really Orange crazy to think Cassidy. AEW held that record three times in like four months this year. It's crazy. Orange it, well, Cassidy was first. I mean, to be sting. And then Brody's memorial shirts. To be fair, obviously, WWE doesn't sell on there and AEW is the next biggest. So I guess you would hope they would. Yeah. But sting again has decades behind him. Brody Lee has decades behind him. Orange Cassidy. Uh, he's been around for, um, with this character. I was going to say with this character about five, six years, maybe. Yeah. And, um, you know, he, he, before this, he actually tried to wrestle like a, like a young buck and whatnot, you know, and, and it didn't work for him. And he said, you know what, I'm going to do the exact opposite. So for this guy to actually sell, be the best selling of 2020. And I mean, you look at the signs in the arenas, you look at the hashtags. I mean, Orange Cassidy is fucking over. Even he was my like son, a huge costume this year for Halloween. Yeah, well, it, part of that's probably because it's the easiest. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> has a pair of jeans, and you can buy aviator sunglasses at Walmart for two fifty. <laughs> but nonetheless, I don't know. It's yeah. pretty hard to find a jean jacket in twenty twenty. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, Orange Cassidy definitely deserves this spot. Even me as – I was a fan of Orange Cassidy, but, I, you know, I'd see him 
three, four times a year. I'd, I'd yeah. watch a YouTube video of something that was awesome, you know, a match that he had or something. Yeah, in the beginning, I never thought he was actually going to get over an AEW. I thought they were going to burn him out too quick. Yeah, that was me. I was like, this, this is a gimmick was a that gimmick. doesn't work. Yeah. In long term, it doesn't work long term. But man, he's he's made it work long term. He's had really good, exciting matches, and he's had really fun, funny matches. And he's made himself a fixture in the the pro wrestling realm. He's the Roman Reigns of AEW with that orange punch. He throws oh, it better than Roman punch. does, by far. It's he, no Sonny D. Just ask that kid going through the refrigerator, but nonetheless, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if people remember that. In the people. Mimosa Mayhem match, that iconic shit right there. Yeah, we all like to forget that Mimosa Mayhem match. It wasn't that bad. I think by your standards, it was better than the stadium stampede, even though I love that match, too. Whew, they were both up there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> And yet they still beat out WWE for shitty, you know what I mean? Even when they didn't quite hit a home run, they were still better than WWE's swing and misses, such as the fucking TLC match. And uh, that was bad. Remember that one? (laughs) WWE's TLC cinematic match? Yeah. God, that was awful. (laughs) Ugh. Speaking of awful. WWE tables, ladders, chairs, and stairs. That was, uh, oh, that was something else, wasn't it? <laughs> and I mean, we could go on and on about awful stuff, Pasty, but um, our next award really kind of encompasses maybe the most awful thing that happened this year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I but... guess outside of uh, uh, WWE backlash. <laughs> yeah. And, and the passing of Brody, Brody Lee and numerous other wrestling icons. Uh, no, this, this award goes to the botch of the year. And I, I, I think there was a couple of contenders and, and the funny thing is it being both from brothers, but the botch <laughs> of the year goes to Matt Hardy and AEW for the forklift spot with Sammy Guevara. I don't even, um, full you know, contact we, with that. We failed at this pasty cause we were supposed to look up when, what that actually happened on. <laughs> um, but it was bad. It was really bad. Yeah. And it wasn't so much the botch. The, the botch itself was bad, but I don't think it would take um, the cake as the botch of the year. It was the fact that they kept the match going and made it continue nothing? to wrestle. Was it at Double or Nothing? Yeah, it was their last pay-per-view. Yeah, so it was... um, It was the fact that they made him keep wrestling that I I think makes it the botch of the year. They let him keep wrestling. He was the one who said, I'm okay to go, and they shouldn't have let him go. Well, yes, you are correct. The man... I don't think Tony Khan was ever there like, you got to finish this match. I don't think that... Especially after... You know, what we've seen emotionally from him the last couple of weeks. Like, uh, right. he's a big softie. He he wouldn't have let Matt Hardy. If, if It's just Matt Hardy's got the tenure. If he says he's okay, who am I to say he's not okay? Well, you, all you out. need to That's be the boss. It, there it you happened go. on All Out. There we go. <laughs> One of their biggest ones, Double or Nothing or All Out. You know. mm. uh, yeah, it was just, it was sad. It's a, a reminder that as, as far as the business has evolved, there's still places we need to work on. Um, health officials and company officials shouldn't rely on the word of their wrestlers no. after an injury like that happens. Mm. Shut it down, move on. Um, I mean, we, we all know, we've all heard the stories, and Matt, Matt Hardy is an old-school wrestling guy, which is makes me feel old to say that now. Yeah, well, he <laughs> but, is, he's from the era of headshots with chairs, you know? It's, yeah, and, and of an era where it was like you just – you you move on. You shake it off. You know, they, they'd literally say, walk it off. You got a concussion, walk it off. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, boss, I really fucked up my head. I'm seeing stars. You know, uh, what are we going to do about tomorrow's show that I'm supposed to main event? You're going to fucking drive there now, and you're going to go work it. Gotcha, boss. You know, I mean, that that used to be the norm. And they're supposed to be big, tough guys who can handle that. But 
we've learned through the NFL, through Chris Benoit, through um, Chris Nowinski. Nowinski? Yeah. Is that his name? Yeah. Yeah. Who's done a lot of work on CTE since he left pro wrestling. <clears throat> doesn't work that way. Doesn't. Just shut it down. Even if he doesn't have a concussion. Shut it down, and vi- there are going to be people who get pissed at you for doing it, saying, oh, Kim, man. But they're going to be few and far between. Probably yeah, vocal, no. but. Any, anybody who, who saw that knew it was serious from the, from the moment it happened. You couldn't miss the fact that his head was the first thing to hit concrete without any kind of bracing from the, cha- the tables that were supposed to catch him. For real. It, it was bad, and he continued the match, and it wasn't worth it for him to continue the match. It didn't make it better it wasn't by any pretty. means. No. He, yeah, it very much looked like a bad match afterwards. It, I'm glad it harkens, he's all right. Yeah, it harkens back to the uh, Mick Foley, um, Hell in a Cell, where it's like so many people think that's like Mick Foley's greatest match, and it's like, you know, yeah, it's very memorable. It's one of the worst matches in WWF history. It's really a shitty match. Yeah. It's not a good match, and it's not enjoyable to watch. It sucks, but... <sighs> and Jesus Christ, Brody Lee and Matt Hardy debuted on the same day. What if we lost both of them this year? That would that would have been awful. Uh, yeah, and, and I hate to say it, we'd we'd have been talking about Matt Hardy right now and not Brody. Probably, I think he would have overshadowed Brody. Yeah, you know, sadly, but I think it would have. Especially Brody, if it had it happened from something in ring related. When somebody who's been there and hit their peak and and, and 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 you know they done the whole thing. It's a bit different. Yeah. Just ask Danny Hodge a page she doesn't give a fuck about. <laughs> Just ask. Uh just ask Beef Sticks Lifetime Achievement Award winner, yeah. Double P, Pat Patterson. Pat Patterson <laughs> also died this year. Didn't get... <laughs> You're so enthusiastic saying that, you fucker. <laughs> he's Woo. old, man. He's old. And he's one of Vince's best friends. How good could he really be? He wasn't that old, though, to be honest, to be dying. No, yeah, yeah. He died at a young age. Um, survived by his life partner. Uh, no, no, not survived. Louis died before he did. Louis died yeah. uh, the day after King of the Ring. Actually, I think King of the Ring 98, I want to say. Louis died. Louis was a professional hairdresser. Mm. Yep. But I think, uh, yeah, Pat Patterson is very... Um, I don't think he gets – he doesn't get the due that he deserves. Not only was he an amazing and fantastic pro wrestler, and, of course, uh, he, uh, he he had a long, lustrous career, but he did so much for WWF going all the way back to the first WrestleMania he was a part of. And all the way through the uh, past, the Attitude Era that everybody says is is the best thing in the world. I think every highlight that you have seen in WWF over the past 30 years, Pat Patterson had a hand in. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Just imagine all the careers we might not have seen if he wouldn't have been there to scout them. Oh, so many. And, and he was their go-to finish guy. You know, he was the guy that made some of the best finishes of matches that we love today that we might not even remember if he didn't have done their finish. And as we talked about in our underrated tag team segment, uh, Stevens and Patterson was one of the best tag teams back in the 60s, 70s, and people just don't talk about them anymore, but they truly were. They were the team to beat back then. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, Patterson, without any of his wrestling accolades, would get a Lifetime Achievement Award just for how much his mind has put in to the wrestling business and formed the wrestling business today. Every company today, from WWF, AEW, Impact, Ring of Honor, the new NWA, MLW, all of them 
are molded in some way by Pat Patterson's doings throughout WWF. 